Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how to install a DHCP. For those who doesn't know, DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So the reason why we are installing this is for uh, managing medium to large businesses. So first of all, we have two type of IP addresses. So if you go to the networks, open network sharing, Ethernet, network and sharing. Uh, change adapter settings right click properties in here we have two type of IP for beside the IP version uh, IP version 4 and IP version 6 we have two type of assignment e manually which is assigned by somebody or obtain an IP automatic uh, obtain an IP address automatically which usually is from a dynamic host configuration protocol server so what is the difference the first of all a static IP address or manual is a dedicated IP address that has been assigned to you uh, this IP address is used by you every time you try to log on into a network on the other hand, a DHCP is an IP address that automatically has been chosen from a pool of IP addresses that are assigned in a DHCP scope available on the network. So think about like static is permanent, if you put it here, static is permanent and DHCP is automatically. But before you try to install a DHCP server, you need to assign a static IP address for himself. So let's start with an IP address of 192.168.1.200. DNS has to be the same, 192.168.200, hit OK, close, close these tabs, and so on. Now that we assign an IP address, a manual or static, we can proceed forward. You can click manage add role from here or add role from the here. So let's click next, here, next, choose the server which you try to use it as a DHCP click next choose DHCP add features it says warning you don't have an IP address no static IP has been found however here it proved that we have go to Ethernet network and sharing change adapter settings right click properties Ethernet protocol version 4 as you can see we do have an IP address a static one so they're just giving you a warning but we just click continue click next 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 restart the destination server automatically if required hit yes and install main time before installing you need to know a couple of things about dhcp dhcp he have a process called dora so if you look around the things we have a dhcp server and a client First of all, the DORA process is discover, offer, request, acknowledge. Every time a client try to go on the network, he will broadcast because he need an IP address. So the first interaction is the client who try to discover a DHCP server. But broadcast meaning it's equivalent to 255, 255, 255, 255. However, since we don't have an IP address, he will broadcast with his own MAC address, which is 48 bits hardware address. If a server is on the network, it will respond, hey, I am a DHCP for this network, what do you want? Again, the client will say, hey, I need this IP address, please help me. DHCP say, okay, you know what, I understand, okay, we are good. So DHCP use port number 67 and 68 UDP. For those who doesn't know, we have TCP and UDP. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. So the difference is one is connection oriented, the other is connection less. Anyway, so let's go back to our story, close. You have a warning marking here, complete DHCP configuration, click next you can choose other credentiality however you need to be very careful for example if you want another server to be a dhcp like a standalone standalone and integrated there are two type of server standalone it will have a single role installed as a dhcp in our case we have an active directory domain services a dns and dhcp and later on we will install a wds and we try to deploy a windows 10 through the network through the pxe so you choose your credentiality or select the other one in order to complete or click commit. Once you click finish, we need to complete the process of DHCP. Go to tools, DHCP, either from the tools, DHCP, and you go 
to this tab or the second choice is you click to the DHCP right click DHCP manager and you still go to absolutely the same part so let's expand a little bit these things in here okay so we deal with IP version 4 at the moment so we click on IP version 4 right click new scope click next name it uh, building 1 floor 1 whatever you like to name it or scoop let's start with 192 168 1.1 192 168 1.2 uh, sorry come on uh, uh, sorry uh, building 1 okay 192.168.1.1, So, it's like this. You cannot assign 255 because 255 is the broadcast. So we can only start from 1 all the way to 254. And at the moment we have a class C which is 24 bits on. You can change it if you want based on your network. So click next. This it will ask you to exclude IP address. I like to exclude the first 10 or 20 IP address for the routers, for the switch, and uh, sorry, not for the switch, for the management and other servers if I need. 192, 168, 1. Dot, let's say 220, all the way to 192, 168, uh, 240. This 20 IP address I will exclude for the servers. So all the time, if I want to exclude or add more servers, I can have every time an IP address available. Or if you want, you can make small number, let's say 1 all the way to 10, add. So I exclude the first 10, 1 to 10, click next. By default, a lease time of 8 days. So what mean lease? You borrow, as I said in the beginning, you borrow an IP address from a DHCP. As a result, this IP, it will be assigned to your computer for the next following 8 days. But you can change it based on your need. If you want to keep it for a day and so on, for 8 is up to you based on your scenario. Yes, I would like to configure this option now. Now, if you need a gateway, the router usually is the gateway. Router is the gateway to the internet. So you need to assign your IP address if you have. Click next. However, we don't have because we are in virtual. So we have our own private network or virtual LAN. Click next. Select the server you have. Next. Click Wins is the old DNS. For those who doesn't know, we have DNS and Wins. Wins is the old form of DNS. Click next. Yes, I want to activate the scope and finish. Now it takes a couple of seconds. Right click, refresh. So as you can see, everything is here. We have a, a scoop of 192.168.1.0 with our name. We have an address pool 192.168.1.1 all the way to 254. We exclude the first 10 numbers. Now, if I want to make a reservation, a reservation, I want to make sure that IP address will always be assigned for this computer or for whatever. So let's go uh, hit the Windows key plus R and you click the run or you can hit the Windows key and type RUN run hit enter CMD now get Mac is a command in order to found your Mac address now whoa CLS okay get Mac CLS now they right you can no longer right click get Mac so edit mark before you can just right click and uh, mark it apparently in Windows 2018 they change it so first you go on the this white bar edit mark hold the left click and choose the Mac address right click again edit and copy now I go to reservation, new reservation. Reservation name is DC01 domain controller. The IP address which will always get is 200 and right click paste the MAC address. So no matter what happen, I have a reservation for this server of 200. Anyway, in this scope option, we have different options which you can choose. Later on, when we'll install a WDS, it will be very easy for us to add a couple of more roles. Anyway, so DHCP, it will allow you to get automatically IP address. Now, let's start with the second process of WDS. WDS stands for Windows Deployment Services. So it will allow you to deploy Windows image 
on the network. So click Manage, Add Role, click Next, Role Base, this is 01, Next. Scroll down, Windows Deployment Services, Add Features, Next, Next, Deploy, Next, Install. What you need to know about WDS is the fact that he used a port number of 69. The port number 69 is the port of TFTP, Trivial File Transfer Protocol. So it will transfer or down transfer the image through the network. So now will we install the WDS role? We need to go to the top of our virtual machine, right click settings, CD DVD, browse. And I would like to choose my ISO image, Windows 10, hit, come on, hit close, okay. We go to File Explorer, this PC, so now we have a Windows 10 image in here. So one more time, right click, settings, CD, DVD, browse choose any windows you want no to take in consideration you can only deploy windows images as the name imply wds windows deployment services you cannot deploy mac you cannot deploy linux you cannot deploy any other operating system than just windows so after the installation we go to tools windows deployment services or as i made the same situation previously you can click on WDS on the left, right click on the server, Windows Deployment Server Services Management. Oh yeah, so now we wait until this thing is going on, okay. So expand the server. As you can see, our server is not configured at the moment. So right click on DC01 or whatever you name the server configure server next so we have two choices integrated or standalone integrated mean you have already adds another role installed in the same server or standalone is a separate in a standalone you need to add couple of extra role into dhcp remember into the dhcp here we, ha we will get more option into the server uh, sorry uh, scope uh, policy where is it come on uh, scope option it will need 67 68 so you need to go to configure scroll down all the way to 67 66 and 67 in order to deploy standalone server but for these purposes let's play first with integrated click next this is where the path will be installed so technically every image you add it it will have the file into the remote install folder which by default is installed in C. It's not recommended to install it into C because if you have a virus it will infect the entire operating system. So it's easy if you just have it in other partition. So click next, warning this volume XLR windows, best performance and blah 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 hit yes. Do not listen to this respond to all client computer known and unknown so you have a choice in order to uh, respond to some clients if you know or not this is used if you want to make unattended deployment so click next so remember early we just add the cd image into the uh, uh, virtual machine so we have it here so we have to browse into the cd in order to take the file necessary so right click add install image okay name it windows 10 oh i double click by default anyway so i name it windows 10 or you can name it windows 7 or windows server whatever you try to deploy windows 10 browse this PC sources and you can identify the file by something called WIM Windows image so take installer because right now we are at the install image so install image click next as you can see we have a Windows Enterprise evolution evaluation sorry next so after the process is finished we need to go to the boot image and we need to do the same things.
So now it finish, click finish, go to boot image, right click at the boot image, browse, boot, see boot.image, boot.wim, okay, open the folder, next, I want to name it Windows 10, Windows 10, this is when you try to deploy an image, it will appear this name on uh, the image so technically if you have different groups with different image windows 10 windows 7 server you know which image you try to deploy click next so this should that should not take so long so now what is very tricky so as you can see we have the install image here with the, our windows 10 we have the boot image but you can see is a little button here which is in a stop mode you need to go all task and start it otherwise your WDS will not be able to deploy um, uh, images so in case is not successful you need first to go to the server manager you need to go to DHCP stop the DHCP turn on the WDS and come back so at the moment we make the WDS and the DHCP however we are not finished yet we need to do something in the real machine because at the moment we have our own DHCP which is virtual and we have another DHCP which is from the real machine so you need to go to your real machine hit Windows R services that MMC you go hit the V button VMware DHCP right click stop so now we finish the first part let's go to home create a new virtual machine next I will install the operating system later choose from the list Windows 10 name it Windows 10 store virtual disk as a single file next customize hardware it's very important to choose the network to host only to be in the same private network as the DH, as the your server and you don't need to add anything into the ISO image because you try to pick up a signal from the network finish and power on so let's power on the virtual machine so now it, the client is looking for a DHCP server in order to make this possible when the pop-out message that a DHCP server has been found we need to click or to tap on the keyboard F12 so let's wait for the installation for the DHCP to be found and then we'll see if we can deploy or not uh, Windows 10 images so hit F12 our server has been found 192.168.1.200 this is 018.atom.ca is my domain so now is looking for the file in order to deploy Windows 10 okay so as you can see Windows deployment services let's click next let's first of all you need to understand it has to connect to your domain so admin must be an authenticated user administrator at a.atom.ca p at whatever password you put p at sswd the most secret password you can ever found so as you can see he found our windows 10 enterprise evolution evaluation sorry so now click new apply hit ok next and automatically it will start installing the client in case you get any errors after this step it means the services on the real machine it still runs so you need to disable VMware DHCP however the only things which you need to take in consideration that if you try to activate NAT and disable VMware DHCP will not work okay guys so Thank you so much, hopefully you like it, give a like and subscribe to my channel. Have a good day.